Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of our town's Let's Play. It is a fine, fair, Boovian evening here in the township of Boo, where we left off before. I believe we were tilling up some land here so we could start to get things planted. There is an unfortunate little grip of stone right there, which I just noticed, which is just making my OCD go crazy. I hate looking at it, I don't like it, but I'm going to do my best to close my eyes and pretend that it's not there. And who knew that little bits of stone could ever trigger something like that. But in the end, what can you do about it? Now, as soon as they get all this tilled out and cow, you are not helping. It never helps to have a cow standing on the land that you're trying to rake. I don't know if you've ever tried to rake underneath a cow before. Doesn't end very well. Not the most pleasant of experiences. Now, once this is all in place, we can go ahead and we're going to expand our land out a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We're going to plant some more trees. That's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and... Let's take the rest of these pine trees and go down to the proper layer here, and I'm actually going to hit the Z key and have everything lay down so I can see what I'm doing. And I just want to make sure that we have plenty of trees to chop down in case we need tons and tons of wood. You never know when you're just going to need all kinds of crazy amounts of wood. So, over here we're building our cool little sexy staircase, our kind of entryway to our super awesome condo on top. I haven't decided who I'm going to bestow this banging little apartment on, but somebody who's special, somebody who has proven themselves not to be absolutely worthless. Now, let's keep placing blocks down here on this bottom level. They are going to have to chop some trees down to take care of that, but hopefully... Oh, and I lost my menu there. What are you doing? What are you doing, Splattercat? You're playing like a noob. You're playing like a huge, huge noob. There we are. No! I wasn't holding down the shift key, so I had to click again. There we are. And it really shouldn't be that traumatizing to me that I wasn't holding down the shift key, but right now, the day is just seeming like one of those days where you're just like, sigh. It's one of those days. Now, we needed to plant some sugar cane, so let's do that as well. What's going on over here? Do we have another merchant coming? Oh, pom-pom, another merchant is coming, I guess. Maybe? Oh yeah, there he is. So maybe we'll get even more sugar cane out of this situation. So let's take a look at his wares and see what we've got. So we got some more sugar cane. There we are. We're going to take that off his hands. We're also going to roll through here and see if there's anything that isn't absolutely worth. He's got some cakes, and I do enjoy cake. But unfortunately, he does not appear to have anything else that is anywhere near to as useful as we would hope. So we'll give him some of our surplus stuff here. We will sell him a nice little grip of our bread just to take the rest of his money from him so that he goes home poor and empty-handed. Nothing like depleting your neighboring city's resources by buying out all their stuff and making them owe you all kinds of money. Now, we need to plant some of this sugarcane, so let's get started on that. And I think sugarcane can grow on hummus on grass, which is good. And so what we'll do is we'll just designate that to be planted all along there. We want to have a big old sugarcane field. For now, we're not going to be able to fill it, but in the future we will be able to. And there's probably somebody out there telling me while they're watching that this is very wasteful and it's a giant waste of my time and a giant waste of my resources, but I want to have tons of sugar. Splattercat has a ridiculous sweet tooth. You guys have no idea. Like, I take sweet tooth. I'm like Willy Wonka up in here, just eating all kinds of candy. Although, now that I think about it, I don't think I ever saw Gene Wilder eat any candy in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So maybe that's... Maybe that's not a proper way to talk about it. But in any case, we're going to plant tons of sugar cane because I love sugar. And if there's one thing that a city inspired by Splattercat needs to have, it's loads and loads of candy. So there we are. So our sugar cane will be planted as soon as it finishes growing. I don't really know how long that takes. I've heard that sugar cane and bananas take a little while to grow just to keep people from spamming them. But let's see. I think it kind of forgot about this in the work queue. Either that or we ran out of stone. Let me check my stone supplies real fast. And yes, we are indeed out of stone. So what that means is we're going to go check out the dungeon here for a second. And I completely am panning to the wrong spot. Let's take a look at our dungeon and see whether it's safe or anything yet. We did have a reasonably sized coal seam down here, which is going to help, and a bird has gotten down into here somehow. Oh, you... Oh, uh, what are you doing? I hate barbarians so much. Save us, bull! Stop them! Stop them, bull! Ah. This is why you never trust in bulls for home defense. And this poor bastard is going to... Attacked by spiders while he's sleeping, and he is toast. There's no way he's making it out of this one. And nobody's coming to help him. I should probably designate some guards or something. This lady just went to sleep. <laughs> Boovian people are not known for their giving spirits. And he actually decided, Tybalt Vernon. 
has decided to slay just everything. So as a reward, Tybalt Vernon is going to be my first guard. So let's find him here on our list. Tybalt Vernon, make yourself known for guard duty. It's like, damn it. <laughs> he's like, I used to be the town video game tester. Now he's got to walk around and lift weights and get all beefy and muscly. Well, that's what you get for being too good at combat, my friend. Never be too good at anything, or they will ask you to do it every single time. It's a lesson that I've learned in life. If you do a job poorly, you'll never be asked... Well, if you consistently perform poorly enough, they will just stop asking you to do anything, and you can get paid to do nothing. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm a super hard worker. Tongue-in-cheek. Anyways. What else is going on around here? Now, we haven't attracted any immigrants in a little while. Let me take a look at everything. The caravan has decided to leave town because we bought one thing from him and then sold him a bunch of bread. So people should start cooking up some more bread here. I do want to make sure that everything's okay. Our food supply looks good. I could have done that easier by just going up here and checking this menu, but eh. I decided to mouse over all the barrels, and it looks like they've placed a block everywhere but that one spot. So we'll place a final block there. Oh, there's the final block right there. Somebody just decided to quit their job in the middle. Lovely. That that Boovian work ethic. That Boovian work ethic. Now we're going to go down to the proper layer, and we're going to start laying this out a little better. And actually, I may have to do this as well. Move, Badger. And I'm not going to repeat that joke. I was tempted to repeat my Badger's interrupting construction joke, but I'm not gonna. And what in the hell has happened right here? Vialmer Vavers. God, what a name. You think he could have a few more consonants in that name? Good God. And while I am tempted to... Oh, we got an elf. One of the elfin folk. And so we'll plant another grave over here somewhere. Well, I guess you don't really plant graves. But I think they're in outdoor decorations. I always forget where graves are at because you don't use them very often. And we'll just throw that over there. We don't have any extra stone though. So let's go ahead and we're going to start quarrying out some of this stuff. Let's get everybody to work. Hopefully nothing terrible happens while we're doing this. Sometimes they chain back to... They train back to zone for those of you out there who are old EverQuest players. A long, long time ago, back in my day when we played MMOs, there was this thing called training to zone. And if you never lived to experience a train to zone, what it was is basically all of the little areas where you could grind out mobs in EverQuest were separated by loading screens. And so you would have just kind of separated zones. And the only way you could clear aggro back in those days was by sprinting to the entrance or to the exit gate to the other zone and trying not to die. And since you lost experience whenever you died, people really, really, really did not want to die. Like, it sucked losing levels. It was really deeply upsetting to do a whole bunch of grinding and then lose a level. And so anyways, you would see this terrible... It was the worst message on Earth if you were standing next to the entrance to the zone. And you would see it. It would say, train to zone. And you'd be like, oh, please don't be to my area. And you would call each entrance something different. So there would be like B1, B2, and B3 would be like the three entrances to the zone. And you'd be standing there and they'd be like, train to zone. And you'd be like, oh, God, no. And somebody would be like, B1. And you're like, damn it, no. And so you would, you would then sprint to zone, and you would see this giant train of players, like 20 players sometimes, with just like hundreds of like owl bears behind them, just running for the zone, just running for dear life, trying not to get killed. And every now and again, one of them would get caught and drop, and you could just, you could smell the misery in the air. And so now you know what a train to zone is, if you're a newer gamer or a younger gamer. I like to, some people never got to experience these ridiculous things that existed in old MMOs and in old games. And so you have to tell them about it so that they know. They'd be like, oh my god, that existed? Yep, it existed. It was not the best system. It, ex it, it definitely existed, though. Although, I really I miss those old school MMOs. Not to, not to be too kind of retrospective and wistful, but I do. I miss old MMOs. I don't miss some of the aspects of old MMOs, like losing levels and all that stuff, but I don't play MMOs anymore. It's a genre that I, I can't get into anymore. I can't do it. I... I've tried the last couple MMOs, and they were just not that fun. But let's get back onto the topic of towns, because, God, that diatribe was quite long. That little narrative there. So let's continue building our stairs before I get caught up talking about Mech Warrior or something. God, you don't even want to get me going on Mech Warrior. You don't even know. You don't even know. Don't get me started on Mech Warrior. Because <laughs> I can talk about Mech Warrior for some days, too. Because Mech Warrior, oh, what a game. What a game, what a game, what a mighty fine game. Now... Let's plant the rest of our wheat fields here, too. So we'll destroy the rest of this mud. 
And when I start to rant, you'll notice that, like, this is why I tell people when I'm at work, I tell people don't talk about video games around me because my productivity is just like, you are, like, single-handedly sabotaging my career if you talk about video games at my job. Like, oh, man, you want to see me self-destruct? Ask me about a video game that I'm really passionate about. You're like, Splattercat, how do you feel about MechWarrior 4 versus MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries? And I will give you an earful. Now... Let's see here, and I know there's going to be some smart ass in the comments. Hey, Splattercat, how do you feel about this? <laughs> yep, I know. So if you're thinking about it, don't do it. Don't do it. Now, <laughs> let's see here. And actually, I like both Mech Warriors. I can't let it go. You see, it's it's obsessive compulsive. I have to talk about it now that I've said it. I like Mech Warrior 2 Mercenaries because that's the first Mech Warrior I ever played. But Mech Warrior 4 Mercenaries was pretty cool, too. Some of the mechs they had in there were pretty awesome, and the arena fights were pretty cool with the announcers. Now, let's see, but then again, we all know that everybody just goes and gets a Timberwolf. Like, nobody plays anything but a Timberwolf in Mech Warrior. <laughs> Why has this grave not been made? Why? What is going on here, guys? There's a dead body laying in the middle of my city, and nobody's come along to clean it up. It is like the raccoon on the side of the road. There's been a raccoon on the side of the road right next to my house for like a month now. And it started out as like a raccoon, like a fully fleshed out raccoon. And over the last month, it's gone from being like a balloony raccoon to like a bloated raccoon. And now it looks like a deflated like raccoon balloon, <laughs> a deflated raccoon balloon, I guess, if there is such a thing. And nobody's come and picked it up yet. Although we should be lucky because my dad was a taxidermist for a while. Well, he dabbled. My dad wasn't a taxidermist by profession, but... He fancied himself a taxidermist, and so my house was always lined with strange dead animals. Like a week ago, he taxidermied a beaver. So now there's like this dead beaver in the garage at my parents' house. I went back for a holiday, and there's this beaver just laying there. <laughs> like, so, new, ho new, new home decorations, eh, Dad? Anyways, let's see here. They are taking their sweet time. Mining out all these walls. Luckily, we didn't lose anybody, which makes me pretty happy. We don't have a hospital now that I'm thinking about it, though, so nobody's going to get any health back. Let's make a temporary hospital. That's probably a good thing to dedicate ourselves to at the moment. So we're going to go to our zoning menu down here, and this is temporary. We're not going to keep this here forever. We'll just put in a small hospital, and for any hospital, you've got to go to your utilities menu, and you've got to put in pill cases. And there we are. We'll put in some pills, and... You'll notice the little sub-caption says PILLS HERE! Which is, of course, a reference to Left 4 Dead. Now, when is Left 4 Dead 3 coming out? Like, when is this gonna happen? God, I am a Left 4 Dead addict. You guys don't know. When Left 4 Dead comes out, if you're on my Steam or you see me on Steam, I will be pretty much eternally locked down on Left 4 Dead 3 when it comes out. Let's see here. Although, I think they do need to add some more, like, to the gameplay, because they didn't add a whole lot of mechanics in Left 4 Dead 2. They need to just... It doesn't need to be, like, what Call of Duty or whatever, where it's just, like, new maps. We're definitely going to need some new mechanics in Left 4 Dead 3. So hopefully they'll do that. I guess there were some new mechanics in Left 4 Dead 2, but I felt like they were kind of just adaptations of things that were already in Left 4 Dead 1. But anyways... God, this... this I don't know what's gotten into me this episode, but I am in this bone merchant. For whatever reason, I don't know... What inspired this? But this bone merchant, he rides a bike made out of bones. I like to think of it as like a motorcycle, but really it's kind of like a, a moped or something. It might even just be a pedal bike. I don't know. He doesn't pedal, so it's hard to tell. Let's see what he's got for us. There's a bunch of bone gear, which we're pretty flush with cash at the moment. We could sell our townies remains to him if we wanted to be really cruel, but we won't. What we'll do is we'll buy out all of his helmets. There we are. And maybe... Yeah, the damage is okay on the sword, so I guess we'll buy a sword, too. And other than that, I really... A bone candle. He's got 17 of them. We could make kind of a really morbid area of our town that's just all made out of bone. And we'll just leave those there, and we'll let our heroes pick them up as they go by, because a lot of the lower-class heroes like some of this bone gear. I was going to, at one point, I really wanted with our last town in Mount Worthless to equip everybody with bone helmets, so we just had a bunch of scary-looking bone helmet people running around. Everybody looking like Digimon, but what was the name of that Digimon? God, there was a Digimon back when I was a kid. Now I'm really dating myself. There was a Digimon. It was one of the original ones that had like a bone helmet on all the time, and that's what that helmet reminds me of. Like if you had a whole bunch of townies, it's just a town full of bipedal Digimon. 
Now, let's see, those blocks have not been placed yet, so I feel like there's not a lot of carpentry going on. Maybe I backlogged myself a little bit by causing all this mining to take place. Hopefully nobody kites anything back at the moment, because we have nobody that's armed here. And let's take a look around our, t our little dungeon area and see... It doesn't look like we've gotten very lucky with gear. I don't see hardly any gear laying around. I saw an iron helmet laying around at one point. Oh, we got copper though, that's good. There's an iron axe. So yeah, we haven't been super lucky with the gear that's been dropping. Oh, a diorite breastplate. I take it back. I take it back! I take it back. There's a diorite breastplate, so maybe I'll send this guy down there to go get it. Go get that diorite breastplate, my friend. Tybalt Vernon. Hero of Boo. Tybalt Vernon. So hopefully we should see him sprint off and down there to take care of business. This guy is sleeping with a corpse in his room. Wait. Oh, that's his... I thought that was the hero... Okay, it was telling me the name of the hero's room. I'm an idiot. I don't know who this was who died right here. Let's take a look. It was our rogue. So the one hero that I wanted to survive got himself killed. He had a super awesome name. His last name was Savage, which I really like. And so now people should be springing into action and taking care of business. He picked up a bone helmet and a bone sword, so that's good. Edmund Bonafon. Anyways, what else can we work on? What else can we work on? We have such a huge work queue right now that, you know, it's a little difficult to keep things up and moving. It looks like people are cutting stone and putting it into place in our little coulombage building down here. Our maison de coulombage. I don't even know how to say that word. I looked it up on, like, I looked it up on Wikipedia just to kind of get an idea of how the building was supposed to look, just how the kind of the wood frame should look on the outside, but the entire article was in French. Like, there was no American or English, I guess that was kind of an ignorant thing to say. There was no English version of the page. There was no Spanish version, so I couldn't read either. And unfortunately, it was in French, so I used Google Translate, which made the whole thing just kind of a mess. But I kind of worked out the vague details of how this is going to look, so we'll see what happens. But basically, we're going to line the outside with coulombage, and hopefully it looks nice. I don't know. I can't guarantee it's going to look amazing, but... It's kind of the first little creative building I've made here. And there's a kerchief laying on the ground. Alright. So, there's spider right up here. We've got an extra curved blade, which... The curved blade has no defense value on it, but it actually does deal a lot of damage, so... Hmm. What's the attack value on the curved blade? Eh, 300. Attack value is basically your chance to hit. Anytime your guys are fighting, I don't know if many people know this, but anytime there's a fight going on, it's kind of using... Like a, it uses a more advanced version of like a d20 dice roll where it takes your attack value and then rolls a dice and matches it versus your opponent's defense value. And so you kind of want your attack value to be high so that you can consistently hit. Being able to hit consistently tends to be more important than being able to hit really hard. I mean, if you want to hit really hard, I guess go for it, but I'm not a gambler. I am not a gambler. So I don't like to I don't like to live on the edge like that unfortunately. I take the sure thing over the maybe every single time. And part of me is tempted to put our part of me is tempted to start putting mines in and down here. I don't see a lot of dead ends. Like this right here needs to be explored. I am just terrified to dig through this wall. Part of me for empirical purposes wants to see what happens if I like dig away at this wall right here. But then again, I've heard horror stories on the town's forums about just... I lurk on the town's forums all the time, by the way. I don't post there very often, but I lurk constantly. But on the town's forums, I've heard nightmares of people being like, Oh god, and flooding like entire sections of their dungeon on accident, a la Dwarf Fortress. So, I'd like to avoid that situation, if at all possible. Now, let's see here. I want to make sure this lines up properly. I don't want it to look weird and funky. So we'll grab that, and we'll go out to here for now. We'll leave a little space in there. And I don't think it may actually connect right there. Yeah, it does. So we'll put another one in right there. And hopefully that'll take care of business. And then over on this side, we need to put in a door for this level. So what we'll do is we'll go... I don't know how much further this goes. Looks like it goes to here, so we'll destroy that stone. There we are. I probably should have counted these all out before I did this. That probably would be the most efficient way, is just to see what a... Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... So it's a 12 by 12, alright. So that's gonna help out a little bit in the future. We'll put like a little hobbit door in here or something where they can access the dungeon. 
And this is just going to be kind of a spiral staircase going down. And on this little overhang, I'm going to put a torch each time, and it's going to look kind of cool. I haven't decided what the building's going to look like that's going to surround this yet, but... One can only assume that it's going to be less than creative. It'll probably look like most of my erector set and most of my Lego creations, so... Slightly oblong and strange looking, but we, d we, we persevere. We do what we can, and by we, I mean Splattercat. Splattercat does what he can. Like, I'm not the most creative person, but you keep on trucking nonetheless. And it looks like we're ready for another set of stairs here, so what we'll do is we'll put in this next little set of stairs. There we are. And I forgot to hold down shift once again. Fantastic. And so, our stairway is looking kind of nice. Our stairway to the upper level, and I can't guarantee it's going to look amazing. I may not have counted this out quite properly yet, but we'll do what we can to make it look decent. There's nothing we can't handle with a little bit of fencing, and our entire dining room seems to be invaded by badgers, which does not seem like a very good thing to be invaded by. From what I've heard, badgers are quite angry little creatures. They're... They are not the friendliest of creations, so... In any case, what else can we focus on here? We need to put a door in right here, so let's go to our furniture menu and we'll grab a door. We'll put in a hobbit half door here. There we are. And we're gonna count out 12 from here. And we'll go... There we are, and I think that counted as 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep. And so actually, I miscounted this wall over here, unfortunately. But what can you do? Well, we can delete the block walls, that's what we can do. And we'll destroy some of this mud. There we are, destroy the mud. And finish putting in walls. And this should actually look really cool once we get done with it. It should look pretty amazing. I, I think it's probably gonna look nice. And then once we got it spiraled all the way down, what we'll do is we'll hollow out the center and there'll be kind of a free folly little area. And I, I get the feeling I'm going to like how it looks. So that being done, I can't think of really too much more to work on while everything's being taken care of here. So let's go ahead and we'll place these final stairs. And while I do that, I'll do my final kind of, my closing, my closing chat, my closing Splattercat pep talk. So where we're going to go with our next episode is we're actually probably going to start focusing on building up our residential areas and making sure that everybody has housing because frankly this giant nasty mess of squares over here is annoying me. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it unfolds and I just want it gone so that I can do something else with this space because frankly I was looking at the piece of paper, the graph paper that I have my my proposed plan for the tavern on and it's going to take a lot of space. We're going to need a ton of space cleared out but I think the tavern is going to be pretty amazing once we get it laid down and I think it's going to be something you guys want to check out so that's probably not going to get started in the next episode I don't think but it will definitely be done within we'll start the floor plan layout in the next two or three episodes for sure so in any case my name is Splattercat thank you for joining me here in this our next episode in the wonderful lovely little town of Boo and I hope you'll choose to join me next time. If you're interested in the game, you should definitely go check out the comment section down there. I'll have the developer's website where you can purchase the game. It's a lot of fun. It has its little foibles and it has its little flaws. But honestly, I keep coming back to it over and over and over again. So I hope you'll check it out. And I will see you next time. Take care out there, guys.